Shri Jean Bala Subramanyam was born on 6th January 1910 in a village called Gudalur, about 19 kilometers away from Mailadudurai. Ancestors of Jean Bala Subramanyam hailed from this village. His father G.V. Narayan Swami Iyer was a great lover of music as also his mother Vishalakshi Ammal. G.V. Narayan Swami Iyer spent his early days in Kumbakonam, Thiruvadai Mudur and other religious centers in that district. During this period, he had many opportunities of moving closely with the stalwarts of the day like Thirukkodi Kaval Krishna Iyer, the great violin maestro, Saraba Shastrigal, the flute prodigy, Thirumarugal Natesha Pillai, a star performer on the Nadaswaram, whose nephew was the all-time great T.N. Rajaratnam Pillai, and also Thirupayanam Panchapakesha Shastrigal, Doyen of Harikatha. Listening to their performances, he imbibed the characteristics of classical Carnatic music and soon became proficient in the Lakshana and the Lakshya aspects. Later on, Narayan Sami Ayer moved to Madras and worked as a teacher in the Hindu high school triplican. Here too, his love of music and his earlier contacts with the great Vidwans of the time brought him in close touch with the Parthasarathi Swami Sabha, a premier institution devoted to the promotion of fine arts. He later became the headmaster of the school and also the secretary of Parthasarathi Swami Sabha and commanded the respect of his students and the musicians of his time. Shri Jean B was affectionately called as Mani and he spent his early years in an atmosphere charged with the choice music of the era. Giants like Koneri Rajapuram Vaidhanada Ayer, Palladam Sanjeeva Rao, Tiruchi Govinda Sami Pillai and Poochi Srinivasa Ayyengar were regular visitors to his house. In an article entitled My First Kacheri written in 1957, Mani gives a graphic account of his early exposure to vintage music. Violinist Karu Chinnasamy Iyer lived next door to us in the same street in Triplican. Right from my birth, I lived more or less in an atmosphere drenched in music and this helped me to nurture, develop and sustain my ardour for music. Plenty of opportunities were available to me during this period. I learned to sing ragas like Sahana, Shenjurutti, Begada and Saveri faultlessly with ease and without inhibitions. I also learned a good many Kirtanas by just listening to them as sung by senior Vidwans. Without formal basic training, I had acquired Swaragyana, which I humbly feel was due to the blessings of elders and savants. Whenever I listened to good music, I had the inner feeling that I could visualize it in the image of Swaras. What my ears would be hearing would be picturized in my mind in Swara forms. <laughs>
Even the old musicians who used to listen to him as a boy could not help admiring the special characteristics of his brigas. Kumbakonam Rajamanikam Pillai in later years paid rich tribute to the Swarasuddham in GNB's brigas and said that such clarity could hardly be sustained at such fast speeds except by a very gifted musician like GNB. In the year 1928, the celebrated musician Musri Subramanya Iyer, scheduled to perform at the music festival organized at the Kapali Shwara Temple in Madras, was unable to come. The desperate organizers turned to an 18-year-old prodigy and asked him to stand in for Mushiri. The boy's father hesitated, as he had never given a public performance before. The boy learnt that Aryakudi Ramanuja Ayyengar, whom he regarded as his Manasiga Guru, had made his debut on a similar occasion. When I heard this story, I accepted the engagement without further hesitation. On going to the Kapali Shwara temple, I worshipped the deities and after a respectful obeisance to the audience, took my seat on the dais. Indeed, I felt a sense of excitement. I closed my eyes and thought about my parents, teachers and other elders. Even before I had completed the Varnam, my excitement had died down and I could feel a sense of willpower and strength of mind having taken command of the situation. That was how a fortuitous event led to the launching of Gudalur Narayan Swami Balasubramanyam, popularly known as GNB. Little did he visualize on that day the shape of things to come, that he too like Arya Kudi, would soon change the course of Carnatic music. <laughs> GNB's appearance on the music scene in the 1930s created a sensation. He unleashed a style spiced with brigas but that shook the Carnatic tradition to its foundation. He could toss off the most complicated brigas with complete alien, keeping his listeners on the edge of their seats. His powerful and pliable voice could traverse up and down the scale and weave complex phrases at lightning speed. Blessed as he was with a facile voice, which could obey his slightest command, he made it sound like a Nagaswaram, the only instrument that can execute rapidly rolled note patterns. <laughs> Well, 
What made GNB immensely popular with the masses were the post Pallavi pieces, which he selected with great care. He did not treat this part of the concert as a winding up phase, but gave the lay listener full value for money with very attractive pieces. There were amusing moments too during this part of the concert, as when he noticed a girl suddenly rise and leave the hall and started with Nalla Shagunam Nokki Shalladi. Some of his popular pieces were Radha Sameta Krishna, Dikka Teriyada Kartil, Chindai Arindivadi, Jayati Jayati, Shonade Shaidida, and the Raga Malika, Pande Mataram Ambikam Bhagavati. He became an institution and an inspiration to a whole generation of young musicians. As a cult figure, he spawned new formulae for the packaging of classical music, which became the fashion improving upon Aryakudi's Kacheri Paddhati. One cannot but admire him for his extraordinary confidence in his gift, which made him set aside certain established norms without changing the basic character of Carnatic music. And being well versed in the theory that is Lakshana of music, he was able to give a theoretical justification for whatever he did through his prolific writings and radio talks. Trendsetter, writer, poet, painter, composer of beautiful krithis, that was GNB. Though steeped in religiosity, GNB also loved the Epicurean life and lived and dressed in style. Clothes, footwear, diamond ear studs, rings and watches, a new one every day according to his son Bhuvaneshwaran were his passions. He was a connoisseur of perfumes and could identify them by the smell. He had his own brand called GNB Kadambam which he mixed with the popular brand Javadu to create a heady effect. He was just as obsessed with cars and houses and is believed to have changed his residence several times on some pretext or the other. At concerts, he liked to present a pleasing appearance. He avoided facial mannerisms while singing, sat erect on the stage and insisted that the tambura also be erect. Sri GNB's presidential address at the 32nd Conference of the Music Academy in 1958 sums up beautifully the values and ideals of GNB and his music. In his address, he said, it seems to me to have been an act of providence that the great South Indian musical trinity should have been born about Tanjore and at about this time. It is almost unimaginable what modern music as it is today would have been if these men of God and musical giants had not appeared on the musical horizon and left us such a rich legacy of musical compositions, which are the main source and sustenance of such a phenomenal development and propagation of musical cultures as is seen today. In music, as in other aspects of the culture we have inherited from the past, we have now come to a stage when I'm afraid blind and unmeaning obedience and adherence to the past will no longer obtain amongst the younger and future generations. Unless we are able to understand and communicate to them the why and how of our past tradition and practices, there is every reason for our being nervous about the continuance of our inherited cultures. Therefore, it behooves us to acquaint ourselves, I mean musicians, and study intimately the science or lakshana of music. We are now in an age of transition. I have a feeling that this being very much of an age of performing artists and seeing as we do, the great dissemination and demand for music, dance and other arts, the future will be assuredly bright if the necessary impetus is given to good composers and men of genius who can invent and present new beautiful and aesthetic compositions and forms in these arts. Nothing new should be rejected merely on the score that it is novel. All cultural progress has been due to pioneers of new ideas and expression, though at their own times they were called rebels. His end came on May 1st, 1965 in Trivandrum at the age of 55. His death signaled the end of a glorious era in Carnatic music. Thus, Sri G. N. Bala Subramaniam was a trendsetter in the realms of Carnatic music. His significant contribution as a musician 
will ever be remembered for posterity by the art community. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 